Welcome to all these repairs. Today we're going to be replacing the oil pump in a Mark 1 VW Cabriolet. Tools required for this, we're going to need jack and jack stands, 3 8 inch ratchet, 10, 13, 15 millimeter sockets, a torque wrench, an oil pump, oil pan gasket, oil filter, 4 liters of, N of motor oil, which we're going to be using 10W30 for the winter or 15W40 for the summer. For this repair, you're going to have to have access to the bottom of the engine. I chose to jack it up. You can use ramps or a lift instead, so make sure you chalk the back of it. Roll the jack underneath, and you can lift on the pinch weld on these vehicles just fine so that we can get to the control arm mount for the jack stand. So here we're raising it up. You can see us sliding the jack stand underneath right where the control arm mount is. We use a little rubber thing there to make sure it doesn't slide off. And then slowly let it back down. It's best to have two people so one can watch while you're letting it down. Just be careful and go nice and slowly. All right, here we're doing the other side. You can see us jacking the car up. Again, I have a second person watching the jack stand on the first side, sliding the jack stand underneath the control arm mount with our little rubber on top and letting it back down. Keeping it nice and controlled here. Okay, now we need to remove the drain plug to drain the oil and make sure we have something handy to catch the approximately four quarts of oil that will be draining out. Okay, here's a quick picture. The plate that's outlined in red here actually needs to be removed before we can get to the oil pan bolts. That's done by removing the two screws which are circled in green. Once those are removed, remove the plate and then you can get to the oil pan screws which we can see here all 20 of those. The two most difficult ones are going to be right there between the transmission bell housing and the oil pan. You can see the two hidden back there. So for this you're going to need a swivel adapter and your 10 millimeter. These are rather challenging, just crack them loose, be careful, make sure you don't slip off. This is the first one. We're working it slowly. There we are. And then we're working on the second one here. Just, it's difficult, be patient, it'll come out. And removing the last bit of the second bolt there. Okay, now that the oil pump is, the last screw is coming out, you might have to take a rubber mallet to it to crack it loose. We actually had already removed it prior to filming this, and we already cracked it loose. You can see there's actually no gasket there right now. Next, we're going to remove these two 15 millimeter bolts that hold the oil pump in. And then we're going to hold the oil pump to make sure it doesn't fall and specifically to protect that plastic tray that we're holding up right now that's connected to the oil pump. It functions for multiple purposes but mainly to keep the oil close to the sump during turns etc. So make sure the oil pump's never just not pulling any oil while as you're turning around doing your crazy things in your car. Okay here we can see just pull the oil pump straight out then you will be able to see the little drive gear on the top right there, the little flat piece. Okay, carefully bend those clips backwards. This is brittle plastic. Um, take your time and then remove the plastic from the pump. Here you can see there we are. And next we are going to clean out the oil pan. This is the first time it's been off in probably 27 years. Make sure to wipe out any gunk that's in there. Give it a good cleaning. This is going to be probably your only chance to do this unless if you want to remove it again. We're, we are definitely hoping not to do that. And then wipe off the top where the gasket's going to mate. Make sure that's all clean so that there's no debris in there causing an oil leak when the gasket's put together. Okay, here's our new oil pump. Make sure we snap it carefully back into the plastic. And then when we prime our oil pump, we're just going to use the oil pan to hold a little bit of the oil. This is actually an oil pump for a 2 liter engine, not the 1.8 that's in the car. It's a common recommended upgrade for these cars. It pumps a little bit more volume. All right, now that the oil pump is in the oil pan, we're going to open the oil that we purchased. Here we're using 10W30 for the winter. And then carefully pour some of the oil into the oil pump where you can see those gears there. Just add a little bit in there for now. 
and then we're going to add a little bit more oil to the oil pan so that as we spin the, the dry gear, it'll suck up the oil from the oil pan and prime the pump just a little bit. Pump priming is an important step to make sure that the engine receives as much oil as quickly as possible after replacement of a part like this. Otherwise, it can go multiple seconds without having any oil flowing through, and that's no good. That, can that could potentially cause damage. We're spinning the oil pump here, and then spin it until you can see some oil coming out from the exit with minimal bubbles. And you can see the oil coming up. You can see a lot of bubbles. We give it a couple more spins, and then when the bubbles die down, I'm, I'm considering it primed. And here you can see the bubbles are more or less subsided. Okay, make sure you have your oil pan actually underneath here catching the dripping oil. Insert the oil pump. Carefully, you might have to turn it a little bit to get that drive gear to sit in there. Hold it up carefully and then get your two bolts that we took out with the 15 millimeter. And you need to torque them to 15 foot pounds or 20 newton meters. And two clicks with the torque wrench to make sure it's good. And we will consider them torqued. Next step, make sure to clean the mating surface on the engine block now. Same reason as previous, make sure that there's no dirt in there so that the oil can seep past the gasket once it's all installed. Be careful not to get any any dirt in the oil pan if you still have it underneath the engine catching the any drips that are coming from the pump. And here we have our new oil pan gasket. So this is actually a Mark III gasket which is upgraded from the Mark I gasket. And the upgrade is the fact that it's actually a rubber gasket as opposed to some paper or cork gaskets depending how old your car is. Okay, the next step is going to be to put the oil pan back on. You can see sliding the gasket around there to make sure that all of the gasket holes align with the pan holes. And then just get one of the 10 millimeter screws, one of the 20, and carefully screw it in. If you can find someone to assist you in this part holding the oil pan, it definitely makes the job a little bit easier. You can see us aligning the hole there. And after some careful alignment of the gasket in the pan, we're able to get the first screw started and hand tight. The second screw on the opposite side is going in hand tight now as well. And then followed by tightening all of the rest of the screws hand tight. Here you can see us torquing the first screw. And then we are going to torque one across from it. And the goal is to kind of do this in a crisscross manner. We actually, as you can see, are not quite doing it crisscross because we avoided the two difficult ones until the end. The torque for these is going to be 11 foot-pounds or 15 newton meters. This is the torque spec for the Mark III engine, the 2.0 engine with the rubber gasket. So it'll be different than what's listed for the Mark I's. And then here we're back to now somewhat, some sort of a crisscross fashion. Okay, and now the finally the two difficult ones again, we will use our swivel extension and do our absolute best to torque that to 11 newton meters. This goes into the aluminum rear main seal housing. So definitely make sure not to over tighten these. They are very easy to strip. And it's a little cold in the garage. You can see the, you can actually see a little bit of the breath right there as we're working on the car. Okay, there we are. And it is tight. Okay, so since we're replacing the oil anyways, we might as well replace the oil filter and do an oil change. We're using an oil filter wrench to remove the oil filter. Um, sometimes you can even just get them off by hand if you didn't tighten them too tightly. We're going to screw it off just a little bit and then leave some of the oil drip since it's at an angle. Make sure to catch some of that. And then once the dripping subsides, then just finish removing the rest of it. It's going to run a little bit, again, since it is at an angle. But just as soon as it unscrews, make sure you hold it vertically and then it'll be no problem. All right. And make sure to clean the oil and filter mating surface there and make sure that there's no gasket still stuck on there or anything weird going on. And the next step is to take the new oil filter and we are going to one oil the gasket and two fill up the oil filter with oil. 
Okay, now the gasket is all oiled up, putting it back on the filter. And then carefully fill the filter with oil so it's actually the the oil will be flowing in the filter through the small four small holes around that center large hole that it gets screwed into. And the main reason for filling this is again so when we start the car, the oil pump um, has to fill the filter first before delivering oil to the rest of the engine. We're going to try to minimize the time where the engine is without oil. And here we have the filter filled with oil. Carefully screw it on. If you don't fill it quite to the top, then you probably won't make as much of a mess as we did here. Okay, to tighten it, it's oil filter states that we need to, once contacting the seal, tighten it three quarters of a turn. And here we're using the oil filter wrench because the oil filter is full of oil, so it's making it a little bit challenging. So that's our three quarters of a turn right there. You don't need to go overboard. And wipe up any mess that we made. Make sure we clean off the oil from the radiator hose. Okay, next make sure to torque the oil drain plug to 22 foot-pounds or 30 newton meters. And then lower the car from the jack stands. The next step is going to be the cleaning around the oil filler cap. Carefully remove the oil filler cap. Sometimes the gasket gets stuck a little bit there as you can see and clean the cap mating surface here to make sure that we're not knocking any dirt inside the valve cover and effectively inside the engine when we're filling it up. Okay, now we're going to fill up the engine with three liters or three quarts of engine oil. The spec is four liters if you're doing an engine oil and filter change, but we already dumped some in the oil pan and some in the filter. And then check it. We wanna make sure that the level's at least above half. As you can see here, it's right at the half mark. And then, moment of truth. All right, here you can see that the engine oil pressure light ended up coming on again once I revved it above approximately 3,000 RPM, but you can see the gauge is indicating approximately 4 bar. So that indicates that there's a problem with the high pressure sensing circuit, which will be fixed in a later video. All right, and finally, one last oil check after we ran the engine. Want to make sure that's again above at least half. Top it off if necessary. And we are just under the halfway mark, so I'm going to top it off just a little bit. Alright, thank you very much for watching. Hope you learned something new and like, comment, subscribe for more. Thank you.